So thank you very much for having us, uh, AskNet community. Always a pleasure. <laughs> I'm already looking at uh, some of the participants in the participants list and so lovely to see so many uh, uh, old names, meaning people I already know uh, and some new ones as well. Um, I'm glad that we are recording, I think, yes. So I'm sure for those who couldn't make it, uh, they can always catch up in this one hour recording and join us uh, sometime tomorrow. So the topic we've been given, like uh, my executive director has said, is creating inclusive spaces for women in tech and media. Uh, I've put in two logos there because um, I'll quickly introduce myself and my colleague, uh, but both of us are affiliated with Eyes on Hub and Investor Saint, uh, which two institutions have a very uh, long and loving history with AskNet. So as we are already beginning to introduce ourselves, being cognizant of time into the chat, uh, just want to quickly highlight the objectives of this specific training. Uh, there were quite a number of them. I will not read through everything, but I think key is for us to have a conversation around uh, this particular topic, uh, find out why it matters, uh, also have a pulse check of you as the AskNet community in your different institutions where you are. Uh, I particularly like the last two objectives, uh, which are developing practical skills and tools for implementing what we might think are best practices. And then I think what's always important is to be as practical and as pragmatic as possible to offer strategies for addresses, addressing the challenges that are faced uh, by our different institutions, organizations uh, in tackling you know, a women inclusivity in tech and media. So we will share this entire slideshow as is. Uh, so don't worry too much about trying to uh, capture notes, uh, but sufficient to say is that this is what we are gathered around. I want to say by way of introduction that uh, the participation of women is very, very important. A couple of years back, I, um, I enjoy new media. One of the things I do is podcasting. Uh, I was part of a podcast that was called Women Hold Up Half the Sky. And this was part of a particular digital skills program uh, where we're having a conversation about how important it is to have women participating in the spaces that we are discussing even today, uh, which was in tech, uh, but also in media, uh, whether it's new media or, or the old type. And so this is a very, very important uh, exercise that we are doing. And these objectives, are, we believe that in the next few sessions will be met. Moving forward, I want to self-introduce because I've just been talking and some of you are wondering who are we speaking to? Uh, I'm the first lady in that uh, facilitator's picture. Uh, my name is Kudzai, my LinkedIn is shared there and I will be your uh, first facilitator for today. Uh, I have a background as an economic development specialist. I'm a financial and digital literacy expert uh, and also uh, very, very enthusiastic about communities uh, such as AskNet uh, and others. I will also ask my colleague to uh, immediately open up uh, her mic and self-introduce. So Soneni, if you can open up your mic and your video, uh, quickly self-introduce and then I'll take us on. Soneni, are you still with us? I think her mic is open, but not, not sure what's the problem. If, if you're speaking, we can't hear you, Sonini, but we can see you. All right, looks like we might have a slight issue there. Uh, nevertheless, anyway, uh, this is why I always put a picture in my presentations. <laughs> uh, hopefully by the time she we get to her part, she will be able to uh, be heard besides being seen. So uh, having self-introduced, I will ask already, and I think you've already started, uh, that we all self-introduce uh, into the chat so that we take account of her. Uh, uh, the time. We only have 45 minutes for this first introductory session. Um, so what I'll do is I will skip some of the things I would have wanted us to start with, but I will ask that we can all go uh, where it our names are found. 
uh, in the participants list. And I'll ask that we rename ourselves similar to what I'm going to do here. Uh, pretty much your name, uh, your institution, in my case, I'm going to put eyes on hub and then the country that I come from, which will be really interesting for me because I'm Zimbabwean, but sitting in Kenya right now. So I am going to rename myself Kudzai Eisen Hub, uh, Zimbabwe, Kenya. Can I invite as many of us whose connection allows us to do so, uh, to go ahead and just change our names? Uh, that way we can have a feel of who is in the room, um, which institution are they affiliated with, and which country are they sitting in? I see already Dawa has uh, sorted herself out. Uh, CC4D and Uganda, that's exactly how we are looking for. I see Yine Yenki, South Sudan, uh, only missing your institution, Yine. Um, and then Matthew already, CC4D, uh, Kovats, uh, Rog, I see that. Uh, well done, fantastic. So we can keep doing that as we proceed. It will make it easier for us to interact, uh, knowing who is sitting where and with, with, with which particular institution. Uh, so having said that, I want to just uh, quickly give some very simple ways of working, being mindful of our time as well. Uh, I have what I call the 3D. Uh, 3D in our world now means three-dimensional. Uh, whenever I take uh, sessions of this nature, just a very gentle reminder on netiquette. Uh, so I think we're doing already okay. Uh, the 3Ds is the first D, is that there shall be no disturbances. So if you're like me, already put your phones or any other devices on silent so that in the little time we have, uh, we don't have any disturbances. And then where we can, let's remember the netiquette, just uh, keep ourselves on mute, unless we are the ones who are speaking. And I think we're doing excellently so far on that. I always believe that for any topic, uh, personally, I know a lot of things, but I do not know everything. Uh, and therefore, as we interact, I want you to know that this is a safe space. Uh, and therefore, my second D is that there shall be no discouragement. Please feel free to ask any questions, uh, to share your experiences. Your lived experiences, particularly for this one, are very valid. Uh, so please do not be discouraged. Feel very encouraged. Uh, be sure that you are in a safe space. And then my third D, which is my uh, favorite, favorite D, is that there shall be no dullness. I enjoy my work, as you can already tell. Uh, I want us to have a really good time in each of these webinars in this series. So by all means, please come here ready to enjoy. So no disturbance, no discouragement, and uh, last but not least, no downness. I want us to get now uh, into a, a overview of how we are going to roll for the next few sessions. Uh, today is the red eye, the morning one. Um, so I'm sitting a little bit ahead of you. Uh, we started when it was eight o'clock, your time it was nine o'clock where we are because we're in GMT plus three. Uh, but today's session will be more of an introductory session, uh, which is Thursday the 22nd of June. And then we will meet again tomorrow, uh, probably a bit more comfortable time, uh, Friday the 23rd at nine o'clock, uh, your time uh, where we'll have uh, another guest joining us, a colleague uh, whom we'll introduce for a case study and then ask me anything. And then thereafter, we will do an in-class exercise uh, from which we will build uh, a foundation for an exercise that we will then do uh, externally, uh, which is something that you are going to go and do uh, in your either as an individual, if you're the only one who's attending, but we highly encourage that you go and do it with your team as an offline exercise. Um, we would need then after we've put that, so that gap there where there's the third point where I've put a number of X's where it says team offline exercise. You can then go and do that somewhat self-paced. We have uh, designed it such that you don't need more than, uh, you know, one hour. So I know people will say, oh, we are busy, but you can find time, just one hour and you would have, you're going to really build on something we'd have started in, uh, in class. And the last but not least, uh, we will ask that we come back together uh, to put together the exercise we'd have worked on uh, through a community of practice type exercise uh, and the things that we will derive from that and some of the things we'll do today will build a very nice foundation uh, for a toolbox that we want to be the key output of this series of webinars. So I am going to pause here, uh, taking note of those that are in the room, uh, assuming that we don't have many new participants coming in tomorrow. Uh, perhaps we can already discuss when might we want to meet. So we're meeting today and tomorrow, um, but then thereafter, you go for an offline exercise, which is something that potentially you could do in the weekend. But I want us to already think about 
when might we uh, then find the next one hour uh, to do the community of practice uh, session? Do we want to do it on a weekday? Do we want to do it on a weekend? Uh, so can I invite that we begin to think about it? And then somewhere towards the end, I will come back to us um, uh, refining and finding a specific day and a specific time uh, that we all agree on for that last hour. Okay, having taken care of those uh, uh, preliminaries, I want us now to get uh, into, uh, I would say the core of why we are here. So I want to start by asking a question and I once again am going to invite us to use the chat. Um, I have one or two tools that are outside Zoom and we'll see whether our respective connectivities will allow us uh, to use uh, some or all of those tools to get a pulse check as we start uh, around this. And then once we've done the pulse check, I will cross over for the last 30 minutes uh, to uh, Soneni who will take us on for 20 minutes with a particular um, you know, uh, framework that we're going to use for all of the other exercises we'll do. She'll introduce that and we'll call it a day for today. So to begin with, I'm going to ask this simple question. What comes to mind first when you think about this topic, uh, which is uh, specifically, uh, you know, uh, women inclusivity or being women inclusive in tech and media? What comes to mind first for you when you think about this topic and your specific work. So I'm going to allow you, all of us, a minute. I will be timing um, just exactly a minute for us, just whatever comes to mind. Remember, this is a safe space. Uh, it's not a test. What comes to mind first when you hear this topic? Let's, let's have a quick conversation in the chat. And let's hear from everyone who's in here. So I'm, I'm expecting no less than 11 responses. Being mindful that there's at least 12 of us in this room already. Sorry, we bring up that um, question again. Unlike WhatsApp, uh, sadly, Zoom does not show me whether you're typing or not, uh, but I'm going to trust the process and hope you are. All right, waiting to hear your responses, ladies and gentlemen. So far, none out of the gate. If it's simpler for you to open up the mic and speak, I will take that as well. Maybe I gently invite a few. Okay, good. I see some uh, beginning to type now. Waiting for something new because I don't want to choose Steve and Soneni first. I want to hear more from the broader AskNet community. Jaxana, are you still with us? I'd love to hear from you. Eva, Yine, you can see I'm selecting those that I know will not. Okay, good. I can see some responses coming in. All right, let me read the first three that have come in while I'm still inviting everyone also to still participate. Uh, Steve says, uh, Kovacs, what do I think of first? Great stories, great experiences that want and need to be shared. Uh, so Nini says, uh, it's giving everyone sitting at the table uh, and letting their voices be heard. Um, I'm not sure who's behind the AskNet webinar series there, but someone says creating room for equity. Uh, Matthew, thank you, says to share stories and experiences. And Jockey says it's all about inclusivity and making sure the obstacles that may be in the way of tech, of women in tech and media are removed, all right? I will admit all of those, and I really especially love yours, and Jockey. I think it's a nice way of really summarizing in different English uh, what we are gathered here about. Oh, good. I see Eva is also saying, what comes to mind is not just including women, but making sure that they're actually empowered 
and bringing results to the table. So she goes even, even deeper. Uh, it's not just being included, but actual empowerment and then seeing results. I like that. I like that as well. Okay, fantastic. I will move on to my next pulse check, um, which I want us to do one by one. I really should have... Uh, made this come appear one by one. But I'm gonna start with the first one, which is a, a mentee. So what I'll do is I will stop sharing now uh, and I will uh, probably pick and choose which of my tools I want us to use. But let's have a quick pulse check. Why do we think women inclusion in tech and media uh, matters? And what I'll ask you to do is that I'm going to put a link now into the chat. And it's a mentee link uh, for as many as can. I'll give us one minute uh, just to click that link. If you click that link, it will take you, even if you're on a mobile device, uh, to a mentee meter, which looks something like this. Let me share that into the screen so that you guys can see it. It will look like this. And it will allow you to put in a word or a phrase uh, in response to the question, why does women inclusion in tech and media matter? So you can give one response, you can give two, but a maximum of three. And please put in a word uh, or a phrase uh, or another word. And then afterwards, please click submit. Uh, let's do that within just one minute, whatever comes to mind first. And then we see what kind of responses we get there. Okay. For those that can, let's uh, please go ahead and use the mentee uh, and let's see how many of us are successful with using that. Uh, if not, if you're completely failing, happy to re receive your response to that question, uh, you know, uh, into the chat and I'll put it for you in the mentee because it's going to create something that I want all of us to gather around. But I already see that uh, there's someone who's already started, which is great. Uh, let's see how many of us are able to just do that. You click the mentee in the chat that link, uh, and then you put in a phrase or two, uh, which is basically a response to why does women inclusion in tech and media matter? Fantastic, I can see that two people have responded, which is great. I want us to get to at least half of the people in the room, as many as can respond on the mentee, uh, the more the merrier. Let's get on with that. I'm liking the responses I'm seeing already. I won't share just as yet, uh, but I want us to co-create something. I will tell you while you're populating uh, that one of the things that we are really looking for and going for in these particular sessions is for us to co-create. So we will treat the what, we will treat the why it matters, uh, and then more importantly, we want to share around the how. And I'm glad that I'm seeing more responses coming into the chat as well from our first questions, which is amazing. Inviting you once again to as many as can, please populate on the mentee. Let's see how far we go. So what I'll already do is for us to see and a very good morning to those that are just joining. If you've just joined, please already jump in. Uh, there is a link in the chat. Let me just repost it. A menti link, which is just a very quick pulse check. Uh, I want you to go ahead and click on that and please uh, put in your views on why does women inclusion in tech and media matter? Uh, I already see five people have successfully done that, which is amazing. That's one third. I hope we can get to at least half of the people that are in the room. So just click the mentee uh, and then you complete with a phrase or a word. And that should help us have a feel of what people think. Okay. Uh, being someone who comes from an African country, uh, you know, one of the things that I really value is getting results as quickly as possible uh, on anything. So I want to go ahead and share my screen now and just show you um, what our mentee is yielding 
I think almost half of us who are in the room have had a chance. So I think that's a nice uh, sample size. It's not shabby. I want to share my screen and just show you what our first pulse check is looking like. So there we go. As you can already tell, and with like uh, eight responses, why does women inclusion in tech and media matter? And I really like the fact that we've built together a word cloud. Uh, some are saying it breaks the gender stereotype, better decision making, diverse perspectives, decisions, innovation, empowerment to inspire. I love how it's, it continues to change. We are now nine people. Representation matters, empowerment, justice and equality. They are people too. But do you see what the biggest word is? Does anyone want to open up their mic and tell me in that word cloud what the biggest word is? Anyone? Come on, guys. This is a penalty. Uh, diversity? Yes, diversity. So the word cloud generally picks up the most common. Uh, of course, granted that if we had used the same phrases, if I had offered maybe five options, uh, it would be a cleaner look. And I'm happy that we are now on 10 uh, of the 14 participants in the room, but clearly uh, diversity leads. So that's something that I want us just to keep in mind. Um, Please feel free if you were struggling or slightly behind to still fill in the mentee. I'm going to keep it open uh, and I'm gonna stop sharing this one and quickly move uh, to my second and last pulse check before I then ask uh, Soneni now to help us uh, with a framework uh, that can get us thinking about certain things. So for this next one, again, uh, I will share yet another, I will share yet another, a link and I'm just going to put that into the chat again because I think we did very well with the other one. This is a very simple one, uh, which is just uh, a very simple question uh, again, which I want us to quickly respond to. Uh, and if you click that specific link there, it's a Slido, uh, S L I D O, right? Um, that should give us a very simple pulse check question uh, that says, how women inclusive are your programs? Sorry, I shared the wrong link there. Let me share the right one. Let me share the right link. The one that is live is, oh yeah, that one now is live. It's actually the right link. I just had not gotten it live yet. So that's a very simple one. Uh, all you need to do, is to choose your rating and it's anonymous because I know it might be an uncomfortable question to answer, uh, but I want us to self-assess uh, from your particular institution, uh, you know, for women in tech and media, how women inclusive do you feel your programs are? And you're going to give yourself uh, a rating uh, and you see that there are a number of emojis uh, which are starting with a very cringe crying, the next one is sad. The one in the middle is a bit neutral. Uh, the next one is a bit of a smiley face. Uh, and then the last one, you know, uh, is, is very happy and saying, oh, we're doing amazing. So I can see already three people have been able to respond. And uh, our average score so far is looking great. Okay, uh, more are responding. You guys are doing amazing. I love you guys. I want to marry you all. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give you only one more minute, then I will use the rest of the time uh, to get into the conversation and introduce the framework for today, which we will build upon tomorrow. I like this, I like this, nine people. I will close as soon as I have 10 and I will share. Okay, and we've hit 10. You guys are doing amazing. So let me go ahead and share my screen again and show you how we are doing uh, in terms of that specific one. So the question was very simple. How women inclusive are your programs? This was the Slido. And as you can see from my screen, uh, it is showing us 40% uh, of us are, are saying we're doing amazing. 30% are happy, 20% uh, are neutral, 10% are saying, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. I like that range uh, because the guys who are sitting at, we are doing amazing, uh, have an opportunity to help the 10% and the 20%. And so it's great that we have a nice uh, mix in the room right now. And so 
I want us, uh, I would have wanted us to do one more, but I think time will not allow us. We'll see how far uh, Soneni, fast Soneni goes with the framework. So what I'll do is I will ask us to uh, stop here and I would want us now, having treated, we know what women inclusivity is about. Uh, it is the uh, things that we've already put into the chat, the things that we've put into the word cloud. Uh, what is women inclusivity? Why does it matter? And I want us to speak to a framework uh, because I think the more important bit is where there are gaps, where there are struggles, even where there are wins, we need to be able to answer uh, some very simple questions. And these very simple questions, I'm going to put them up right now. Uh, once again, into going back to my slideshow, I'm going to put them once again into the screen. I'll share my screen and I just say, we might have spoken about the what, we've spoken a bit to the why, um, but now I want us to spend the rest of the time uh, talking to the how. And I want us to answer these simple questions. What can and should we be doing? And then what resources or tools do we need? We will not answer these questions in integrity today, but we want to start that conversation. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Soneni now for the next 15 minutes. Uh, to take us on by introducing a framework that will form the basis for our discussions uh, from tomorrow and for the session that we'll give you to go and do offline and then when we come together for a community of practice. So Sonini, I don't know whether you want me to share this, keep the screen, screen shared for you. Or perhaps yeah, my share. I can't share from my end. Okay, fantastic. So I'll share. What I'll do is I'll mute myself this end uh, and then I will now hand over to you as I um, uh, ask you to introduce this tool. Okay, so over to you, Soneni. I hope you can see it now. Okay, thank you so much, Kutai. Good morning, everyone. I didn't have a chance to greet you. <laughs> it's good to have you here. So I'll start off by saying uh, the, a statement from one of my favorite persons. She always said that uh, the greatest poverty that anyone can ever have is that of access. So when we talk of inclusion, we talk of access, we talk of opportunities. So I'm going to introduce um, these two because most in most instances, we really want to have our programs or whatever we do inc very inclusive, but sometimes we don't have the know-how the know -how, how to handle or how to take all that thing. So I'll introduce to you the, a tool called the in Gender Inequality Triangle. And just like a triangle, it has uh, three angles and it has um, very four, very four, four simple steps that one can, can, can take. So it has the scan, the awareness, the solutioning and the actioning. So could I, may you please move, take us to the next slide where I'll unpack our triangle. So we, we mentioned that our, our first angle is scan. What do we mean up, uh, uh, what we, we mean when we talk about scanning the room? So whenever you have a meeting, whenever you walk into a room, whether it be it a virtual room, like this platform that we are using right now, or a physical room, maybe a boardroom, or a venue where we are holding our, 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 our meetings, the first thing that you need to, to do when you get there is to scan, to check if everyone is represented. Do we have enough women in the room? Do we have enough women in the, in the board? And uh, do you, you, you look around and you ask others, is everyone here? Are we all represented? Are we all represented? So in checking, uh, in scanning, we also check some issues like, um, do we have, women from minority groups, are they represented? Because sometimes uh, when we scan the room, we just check, maybe we see the women and we think that everyone is here. Are the women from the minority groups represented? Are women from some mi minority ethnicity groups represented? Do we have women who are, who are disabled, who are living with disability, are they represented? So uh, it kind of helps you have an idea if you are lacking or you are in the right direction. So our next, our next uh, angle is divided into two. 
it talks of um, creating corporate awareness in the other bit, talks about solutioning. So I'll first uh, take on the issue of creating corporate awareness. Uh, by creating corporate awareness, when you have scanned your room and you've noted that there are people who are missing there, you ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you aware that we are, we are not, not everyone is here. We, there are other people who are missing because it's so easy for you to, to notice that maybe not everyone is represented because of the, of the lens that you wear, because we all walk through life wearing different lenses, simply because we come from different backgrounds in terms of culture, in terms of race, in terms of our privilege. So sometimes because maybe you are from an elite group, some opportunities are easy for you to access. And uh, by, uh, by, by raising that awareness, by asking your neighbor, it helps open their eyes if they were, they were not aware that there are people who are missing. And also the bit about awareness also talks to the issue of those people who are supposed to be participating. Sometimes uh, people are not aware of some of the opportunities that are available to them. Maybe you've got this meeting, maybe people didn't know about it. They could have attended if they knew, but because they don't know, they are not here. So we also create an awareness among those people that we want to include in our room the next time we are going to have meetings, that they know that they have got some opportunities that, that are accessible to them. So I'll just give an example for us at Eisen Hub. We offer incubation and uh, incubation programs for, we, uh, for entrepreneurs who are in small businesses. So given our economy in Zimbabwe, we noticed that uh, this, this sector is mostly dominated by women, but most of them are not aware of opportunities for training that are available to them. So what did we do? We, we talked to the other women who usually showed up for our meeting our meetings for, for, the, for our programs that we offered and, and raised the awareness. And they, they are the ones who helped us reach out to a, a broader base of other women who are not already included in our, in our system. So we also, the, the other bit of, of the second angle talks about solutioning. After you have scanned the room, after you've raised awareness among your peers, among your audience, what do we need to do? We need to come, out, come up with solutions, solutions that will speak to the specific needs that we have noticed. Because maybe some people are not showing up because they've got some concerns. Maybe in, in raising awareness, sometimes that's when you, you come co become cognizant of the things that are stopping them from participating. So in that, with, in that regard, you tend to to come up with solutions, practical solutions that will help you to, to improve inclus inclusion the next time you are going to program. So solutions, will, you sometimes you may just maybe speak to, your, to the people whom you, you want to incorporate the next time. You can use your employers, your, your, empl your employees to reach out to other people because that way, you, it helps to reach out to the people who are not already in your system. So you come up with those solutions. After coming up with, with solutions, you know, um, it, in reference to, to the example that I gave you before, when we, we raised awareness among us, among the, uh, the, the, the women, we decided to come up with a solution that we are going to create a program that is specifically for women that is uh, for women entrepreneurs. So we, we came up with a program called the Female Founders Program. And that was, was just tailor-made for, for them. So if you create um, a dedicated program, it in turn um, increase participation and inclusion. So moving on to our next and last angle, is um, the actioning. Uh, 
there is a, someone said uh, finding a hundred solutions and implementing none is an exercise in futility. So no matter how many solutions you come with, if you don't put action to it, it's just you haven't done anything. So for, for it to make sense, you just have to write solutions that you know that you are going to, to put into action. You are going to to, to practicalize over the next few, few, few months, you set deadlines, you set, uh, uh, maybe you, you tell yourself that uh, when we maybe after three months or five months, we are going to start this program. After we have started this program, we are going to do one, two, three, four for, for us to, to improve inclusion. So on our bit as Eisen Hub, we started looking for grants uh, and we got grants and we also involved some stakeholders and we implemented our female founders pro program that uh, offers a pitching platform for women to network, to, to extend their reach, to, for, to further their market linkages and to attract investment. So no matter what you do, just make sure that you, whatever solutions you, you bring up, you you are bound to, to follow through and make something of them. So this is our, um, our gender inequality triangle and it's attributed to Matepo's um, CV. And uh, in our next slide, the, the slide that I was using before, it is um, a link where you can, maybe in your spare time, just click and just get more information. Thank you so much, and thank you for listening. Over to you, Kudzai. All right, amazing. Thank you so much, Soneni. Uh, I think for a Thursday, it's always good to learn something new. Um, and so I think I want to go back to the slide that she started with, uh, which is our summary slide. And we're going to build our conversations around this. Scanning, awareness, solutioning and actioning. The good thing is that this can be used at whatever level you are in. For those that were saying to themselves, oh, our programs are only at 10%, you can use this. For those that were saying, oh, we're doing amazing, uh, this can help you to also uh, be even more amazing. So thank you very much, Soneni, for helping us with that um, uh, theory around how we can actually begin to treat the, women, uh, the issue of women inclusivity in tech and media. Can we scan our spaces? Can we raise awareness? Can we begin to do solutions and actioning? Now, what we will be doing in the next three sessions uh, is we in a way began to scan, but we'll ask you to do more of that live when we meet again tomorrow. So our already homework for tonight is for you to already just begin to think about your work. And then we're going to come back to this exactly and there's an exercise we will do around this uh, tomorrow when we meet. But having said that, uh, knowing that we've introduced quite a number of things today, uh, I want to just pause and get a quick feedback session uh, from you guys. Uh, where would you place yourself right now? I'm going to open up for the next, and we're doing amazing for time with about 11 minutes. Uh, so let's take five minutes to take any questions, comments. Uh, before I see, I see already a, a comment, an interesting comment in the chat from Steve there. Before I reference that, um, from what you've just heard, uh, the framework, uh, where would you place yourself today? And then if there are any questions, we would take those. But right now, uh, let me ask, from what we've learned so far, just these introductory bits, uh, very quick pulse check, which one are you? Are you A? Are you at B? Are you at C? Are you at D or E, F, G, H, I or J? So let's hear from you in the chat once again. I expect my chat to be burning. All you need to do is just look at those images uh, and let us know which one is a uh, showing us how you feel right now, having received the information we have today by way of introductory session. All right, please talk to me before I start naming names. Ah, there we go, first one out of the gate. All right, I see Yara is sitting at E, Matthew is at E as well. Let's see how many we have of whatever letter. 
please, this one, I expect everybody to participate. I want 16 responses. The only person who's not responding there is me <laughs> or probably me and Sonini. So I expect 15 responses. I see there's a C there. All right, lovely. Let's hear more from the others. You see, I've been doing online training since lockdowns in 2020. And I know sometimes adults leave this thing running while they are doing the laundry. <laughs> so we found a way to keep you guys engaged. This is how we make sure you were here. <laughs> All right, great. I see that there are quite a number of Gs. Uh, no, no, Es actually. Uh, quite a number of Fs. Uh, quite a number of Gs, which is really interesting. Uh, so I'm going to pick a few to give us a feeling of why. Emmanuel, you are saying you are an E. Do you mind quickly opening up your mic and telling us why you are sitting at E? Is that grinning boy? Over to you, Emmanuel. Okay, thank you. Uh, I chose E because I've learned a lot and I believe that when we put this into practice and we may have more women engaging in the tech and media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eva, I see a G there. What is your feeling? It's like that dancing girl. Why G? Yes. Um, dancing, because I'm celebrating. Um, so, so Nini has touched a very important point about awareness uh, because most times, yes, we have a lot of women participating, uh, uh, missing out on trainings or participating in a lot of activities because we don't do enough awareness. And sometimes we mistake which kind of awareness we are doing because we don't understand the context most times. So this topic is really very important for us hubs so that we can learn and try to go back and restructure or set uh, different strategies to bring in more women who can actively participate. So this is really interesting. That's why I'm dancing because it has been brought up. Thank you. All right, lovely. Steve is asking, is A good and F less good? Not at all. We're just saying pick any letter because each letter has an image that represents where you are. Uh, so yeah, that, that really is a matter of where do you find yourself? So E and G we've heard from. Let's hear from an F. Uh, Edina, you are saying F. Why F? Yeah, I selected letter F. Like when you look at the image of that lady, I mean the girl, the little girl, she is calm, waiting like for more things to come. So I'm looking forward to see what I'm going to learn tomorrow. I still have a lot to learn from this, from this webinar because this is very interesting topic to me. I have a lot of problems related to this, like women, gender things. So I'm looking forward to learning more. That's why I'm still calm, waiting for more things to come. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's finish with a C. And Joki, care to tell us why you chose C? Um, yeah, so for me, C represented somebody who has just learned something very interesting, might not have thought about it before. So um, when we look at um, the issue of women inclusion, it's about sexism, but we don't look at the other isms, which was touched upon, which is ableism. So when we scan the room, uh, we say we have women, but do you have women who are abled differently? Do you have women who are from you know, some very marginalized communities, or do you just, when you have women, you have women who might be a bit more empowered than most, but do we like scan and say, do we have all women represented? So to me, that was quite interesting. I thought I've really learned something so that I could see. Fantastic. I'm really glad to take note. I think those were the largely represented letters. I generally worry when we take a class or a webinar of this nature, uh, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, um, eyes, for example, <laughs> eyes a little worrying. Uh, but that said, I want to thank all of you for your feedback. Uh, let me also now open up if there might be any uh, specific questions, any specific questions. If you don't mind raising your hand, perhaps I stop sharing so that I can easily see and just make sure I have a view of the whole gallery here. Just scanning, any, any questions before I come to the comments? Right, I don't see a hand so far. So perhaps I come back to the comment. 
uh, that, oh, is that a hand, Steve? Yes, I was gonna read your comment now. Is that the one you're raising your hand for? Please go ahead. Okay, just a very short uh, note to wrap this up. And uh, sorry for my moderately outdated background from the Peace Jam. Um, you can still use that hashtag. Uh, thank you very much, Kudzai, for this for this introduction. Um, I'm I'm really curious to hear in the in the coming sessions um, from the women who are participating in the webinar, and I hope that we will maybe get some more um, to hear about their experiences of what what are the things that have worked and have not worked. Um, where we usually define problems very well, um, but we're not very good often at listening to um, so solutions that have already been tried. Um, and I would just, I would, I would love to hear a little, like I have some conversation um, about some of those kinds of methodologies to see, for example, how the opinions of what works and what doesn't work vary between the men in the group and the women in the group, just as an example. So thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to the, the coming follow-ups. <laughs> okay, it's uh, good that you have asked and perhaps to already respond to your comments so that I feel I've closed and have treated everything. Uh, you also had asked around women did not participate because they did not register. Really the discussion about the why, uh, and I think some of the things were treated by Soneni, but some of the things we'll treat as we also go forward. I have put one last link today where we were giving you lots of stuff to get you started so that we all get into the school vibe. Um, because we don't have a lot of time, I want us to get started on it in these first two minutes, which interestingly, uh, Steve, uh, somewhat treats some of the things that you've already been asking. Uh, we have prepared an idea board, which we want to keep open. Um, and I want to invite that we can start uh, to populate it right away for those of you that are able to. Uh, and you can, we're going to keep this open all the way to tomorrow. Uh, so you can just already add. Uh, and this was our other link, which we didn't use when we did the pulse check. Perhaps this was actually a better entry point. I will share my screen shortly uh, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, but just to give you any instruction on how it works, all you need to do is to literally click. Um, if you go onto the screen, let's see if it works live. I want to just share that. Uh, and where is my idea board? Yes, there it is. Now, you see that idea board there? I believe you can see my screen. Yes, and I can click. Uh, so uh, we're talking about wins and we're very deliberate. We'd love to see the wins, right? So what is working really, right? If you put a, a click on that plus, it will bring out a sticky note. And then you can literally write on that note. I see some people are doing that already. Perfect. So dedicated programs and then our struggles, uh, you can then also put that in. Now, you can also choose if you want to put in a, a, a plus, uh, you know, a win to say perhaps is that we are our location is a win because perhaps you live smack back in the middle of a place where there are, women can easily access your space. And if you want to already actually speak about who you are uh, as Kudzai, then that can help us to come back when we have the conversation ongoing and say, Kudzai, could you tell us more about that? So we won't have time to do this in great detail because I see we're only left with one minute uh, and we want you to come back. We don't want to take this out too long. So I will ask um, that you can, continue to populate this. Uh, don't, don't manage yourself too much. Just put whatever struggle is there. And I can see some of you guys already got it right. Now, for us, we know that dedicated programs have been a win. And so if you see that another person has already written something, you would have wanted to also call your win. Instead of writing a new sticky note, you can actually just go there and upvote it. I've clicked it. I put in a thumb, thumbs up or a like, and then I close and now it has a plus one. Funding, someone is putting a plus one already. Um, I hope we follow how that works. And so I want us to keep this open for the duration, you know, of when we'll have these interactions. Please feel free to add in what are your wins, uh, what is working, uh, and then under the struggles, you can put in your struggles and you can also just actually append your name uh, so that like what Steve was saying, 
we have an opportunity. That's if you don't, you don't feel it's very private. We have an opportunity to then pull up and say, oh, Eve, you were saying that this is working for you. Uh, uh, or Richard, you were saying that this is working for you. So we can then see a feel of, you know, for the ladies, the gents, uh, the different places in different locations, who's doing what and how are they uh, going in there. Okay. So uh, I see comments there. Could I thanks for all this? These tools you are using are amazing. You could give a summary of them anytime, maybe tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. I always say when I take a class like this, uh, not only are you learning the actual content, but some tools that you guys who have communities can also go out and use. All of them are free. All of them are open source. So don't worry. Uh, when we write the uh, initial report uh, and also share the documents, we'll put in a list of all of the resources. Uh, but you've already listed them, Romeo. Idea boards, Menti. You get the uh, you get the PowerPoint exactly as it is. And it has all of these already. So it is one past one. To be fair, we did start at nine past. It's one past, uh, sorry, one past now in the hour. Uh, but I want us to stop here. You always want to make sure as a good doctor, uh, while people still continue. So we're going to call it a day. We meet tomorrow. We meet tomorrow, Friday, the 23rd of June, at exactly nine o'clock your time, which is Berlin time uh, or Central European time or Central African time, GMT plus two. You are here uh, tomorrow, guys, at exactly your nine o'clock.